The world's top football clubs could be missing out on a combined annual revenue of $900 million by not building fan loyalty. The latest Fan Relationship Index report says clubs need to better understand a new generation of digital savvy fans. Football lovers in Brazil spend the most shelling out an average of $206 a year to fly the flag of their favourite team. Fans in the UK and Spain come just a little bit behind. Uh, when you break that down by club, it's fans of uh, Premier League champions, Manchester City, who spend the most, just over $250 each per year. Brazilian giants, Flamenco, uh, come a close second. And the impact of better understanding what fans want can, of course, be seen in the U.S. Major Basketball League and National Football League. Their average revenue per fan is ten times higher than the leading European football clubs. Well, let's talk now to uh, Neil Joyce, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the company behind that report, CLV Group. Um, Neil, welcome. First of all, what should European football clubs be doing to enhance fans' uh, experience and, more to the point, get them to spend a load more? I think you, you remarked upon this early, straight away, that this all starts with an understanding of fans and investing proportionately to fans, not just fans who go to games, which is where a lot of the financials today stem from. But looking beyond that, so look at the fans of Manchester City or Manchester United or Chelsea who are in the United States or in the Middle East, for instance, as well. Football teams in Europe right now only realistically understand about 5% of their global fan bases. The insights produced within the report actually starts to surface the 95% of unknown fans. So to better understand those fans, allows you to then understand the needs and wants of those fans and marry them up against digital propositions such as new loyalty programs underpinned by Web3 technologies, virtual streaming, and also match day experiences. Much of the today is about capacity and match day fans. Digital propositions give you limitless capacity. I mean, it's worth saying the NBA and the NFL, I think, make 10 times the amount of money per fan than uh, European um, footy clubs. What are they doing differently? They've optimized on the match day fan. So they, they charge a lot higher match day ticket prices to go and watch an NBA game. There's volumes of game that far outstrip the Premier League. So in the Premier League alone, as we know, there's 38 games per season. You start to look at NBA and there's over 100 plus per season as well. So volume of games, optimizing ticket prices, which is what's happened in the US, has forged the path. Also, you look to the NBA. They've really done a great job of engaging with fans in global markets like China, where they've increased revenue through streaming propositions into that marketplace. So the signs are there for what the Premier League teams and the European teams need to follow. It's just a case of really investing heavily in understanding and unlocking the opportunities around those global fans who they don't know who they are right now. Neil, you say optimizing ticket prices. I mean, that means sticking ticket prices up uh, a huge amount. I mean, let's be fair, we're in the middle of a big cost of living, living crisis, not just in Europe, but all around the world. I mean, going to a, a football match is already eye wateringly expensive. Um, I mean, seriously, are you going to really persuade football fans to part with even more of their money? Yeah. In, in line with that, within the analysis that we conducted, surprisingly at first glance, fans they used to ask for preferential treatment of getting tickets to games through traditional membership programs. Our analysis showed that actually that isn't the case. Fans want discounts on ticket prices now. The real opportunity for these big European teams is to look at monetizing global fans who don't go to games and pay ticket prices and reinvest those revenues back into the match day loyal fans, either by subsidizing ticket prices or in some cases giving away tickets for free. And that's obviously in line with understanding current economic factors, but also rewarding longer term loyalty of those fans that have always gone to those games.